Hello. This is the presentation of the paper Change a Bit to Save Bytes, presented at the conference ICC 2023 in Rome. I will introduce two lossy techniques called addition and multiplication transforms. These techniques preprocess datasets of floating point numbers in order to enhance the compression capabilities of compressors. Let's suppose to have a series of floating point data and that we want to compress this set of numbers in order to save storage space or possibly transmission costs. One of the possible strategies to do so is called deduplication. The idea is to identify common patterns of bits in each number in the set, store the pattern as metadata with a short ID associated with it, and then use the ID to represent the pattern in the dataset, keeping the same information content. To understand how to identify and manipulate these patterns, we have to understand how floating point numbers work in computers first, specifically in the standard IEEE 754, which is the most common one. First, let's take a look at the line of real numbers. The first thing to know is that we can only represent a finite set of numbers on the real axis, more specifically only 2 to the power of 23 numbers between every power of 2 associated and assuming a 32-bit system. Each number x is represented by three parts, a sign, a mantissa, and an exponent, all coming together in this formula. The exponent represents the power of 2 x belongs to, the sign whether it's positive or negative, and the mantissa represents increasingly smaller powers of 2 so to get closer and closer to the real number to be represented. We can see how moving the number along the axis makes the exponent and matissa bits, of course, change accordingly. If we now introduce a second number, y, the question is, is there a way to guarantee that x and y will share some bits so to use the application for compression? For example, if we look at the most significant bit of the mantissa, x and y have different binary values for it. However, when we shift them both with an addition to a new region of numbers on the real line, that bit becomes equal in both. It turns out that we can tune this shift so to guarantee an arbitrary number of shared bits, both in the mantissa and in the exponent, where the more we push toward bigger numbers, bigger powers of 2, the more mantissa bits will be guaranteed to be shared. The price to pay for these patterns to appear is the introduction of losses in the process. In fact, the result of the addition needs to be approximated to the closest representable floating point number, introducing an error. The same happens when we want to retrieve the original number with the corresponding subtraction. Therefore, from the original dataset, when we apply the addition transform, we get number that are more compressible than the original due to the shared portion of bits in their binary representation, and their recovered numbers will be slightly skewed from the original ones. We can bound these losses according to the user needs and tune the addition so to satisfy any precision requirement. The second transform is the multiplication transform. It relies on the fact that some numbers when multiplied by specific factors, output floating point numbers with no decimals, which translates in long sequences of zeros in the least significant portion of the mantissa. It turns out that for every factor m, 
we can compute the pattern in the mantissa that results in zeros after the multiplication. Therefore, given a dataset, the idea is to substitute the original numbers with the ones having the property of resulting in non-decimal numbers as output of the multiplication, storing the factor as metadata. As with the addition transform, this introduces some losses that we can bound according to the requirements in terms of precision and compressibility. To conclude, if we look at how much the addition and multiplication transforms can improve compression, considering some datasets of floating point numbers, we see that we can reduce the size of the compressed dataset up to minus 80% with consistently improved performances compared to other preprocessing methods. Thank you for watching.